March has arrived and it's time for a new Home Assistant release. This time it will be 2022.3. Let's look at 5 things in a new version of Home Assistant, plus one that you definitely need to check out if you have that integration. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we begin, let me give a brief shout out to everybody who has become my YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support. And also thanks to everybody who watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below on the YouTube. And now let's get started with the March release of Home Assistant. As with version from February 2022, the March version also brings a lot of changes and a lot of breaking changes. But I've picked up five major things in this release. So let's start. First thing is something that's new. Yes, Home Assistant already has a Discord server, community forum, and of course Twitter, which you should definitely follow if you're not still following it. But some of you may prefer newsletters. This is why from now you can subscribe to the Home Assistant newsletter and you will be receiving news in your mailbox. Number two, and this one will be much longer. There are a lot of changes once again to Media Player. And I love them, especially one big change or new addition to Media Browser or Media Player that I've recorded video some time ago and that's radio. But we'll talk about that in a few minutes. The new version has something that's called Media Selector. Let me show you how it looks on this beta version of Home Assistant. When you first restart the newly released version, you will be presented with the option, of course, if you have such, to connect the LNA servers. And there is another additional thing here called Radio Browsers, but as I mentioned, I'll be talking about it later on. So what are the LNA servers? In my case, it has found the MB server and also one additional media server video station from Synology. We also now have option to stream cameras directly from here and you are presented with all the cameras that your system has. Some of my cameras are offline. But how do you operate it? For example, you can select here, you can select that you want to play this camera, here in the right corner, select on what speaker or what media player you want to play it. This can either be Chromecast devices that do have or do not have displays. For example, Display Me has display. I can select it, select this camera, and now this camera will be streamed to this media player, which is really neat function. So besides cameras and the LNA servers, one great thing is text-to-speech. If we select text-to-speech, we can select any of the text-to-speech engines that we have. And here I have Nabucasa and Google text-to-speech service. And yes, you can push also text messages from here. Select speaker, I'll be using browser. Select service that you want to use. And in Nabucasa case, you can even select the language and the gender and press say. The message itself will then be pushed through the whatever media player you have selected. But even with camera, the LNA servers and text-to-speech, that's not all. The biggest addition is the Radio Browser. And why the Radio Browser was added? Because it's a nice and easy feature for everybody that has freshly installed Home Assistant to have something in it, because you do not need anything extra. Just click on Radio Browser, select Country, Select radio station and you can play it on any media browser or any media player that you have in your home assistant. But this is not all. It can be played by popularity, by category and by language. As I mentioned, I previously recorded radio player script video on how you can have radio stations played from Home Assistant to your media speakers. And this video was really popular. This integration now will definitely kill the functionality, but I'm really glad that it came. Because let's see what it takes to create alarm clock with the radio. If we go to configuration, 
automations, create new automation, start from scratch. Let's select time, fixed time at, at 7 a.m. I want to play radio. What I have to do here is in action type, select play media, which is something that is also new in 2022.3. 20, Select media player, for example, downstairs, and it will play on all the speakers downstairs. And here, pick media. And once again, you can pick either cameras, the LNA servers, local media, text to speech, yes, text to speech, and also radio browser. Once again, Croatia. And let's find Antenna Zagreb Live. Save. And we have created very simple and very easy alarm clock that would play radio every morning at 7 a.m. Of course, don't forget to put some conditions and check if it's a work day or not, because you do not to wake up too early if you do not have to. But that's not all. There is one additional thing that was added, which is also awesome. Go to Local Media, Manage, Add Media. And now you can upload files to the media player or media browser from within Home Assistant. Third thing that I want to point as a new thing in 2022.3 is the UI update. Frontend is now using Material Web Components or MWC, and this may have not changed a lot in terms of what you see now, but it will improve in the future and allow some functionalities or some things that were not allowed or that were hard to implement previously. So expect more changes to the UI in the future. Fourth new thing is a triggered. In the editor, in the automations, in the triggers, if you select specific device, you can now see and check if this device is working and if this is your intended action. Let's try and see if we can do something with this Akara door window sensor. I have created one new automation and I have selected this device. And this is this door and window Akara sensor. And for the trigger, I have selected that I want to be notified or this automation to be triggered if this is opened. So watch what happens when I open the door. You instantly receive information here and that's really great and it also helps you to identify if this is your intended or not intended case for this automation. For the fifth and the last thing that I want to show you from 2022.3 release of Home Assistant is Entity ID autocompletion in automations, but when you're working with YAML. I myself, unfortunately, am not using the automation editor inside Home Assistant that much. I'm using VS Code, and VS Code already has a lot of integrations and it can pull all the information or almost all the information from Home Assistant that Home Assistant can provide. This can be device IDs, entity IDs, names, etc. But this is the first time that you can do it now in the Automations Editor through the Home Assistant UI web interface. So let's check how it looks. If we would want to type in here the name of device instead of selecting it from the list, we could start typing sensor dot and we have a list of all those devices. If I would type F, it would try to find all the sensors that I have that have a letter F. And I will be selecting sensor Frank because yes, I have sensor that is monitoring Frank and how he is doing. This can really help you, although I'm not sure why I would use it for this, but there are some times when you cannot use UI editor in automations and when you have to use YAML and this will definitely help you in those cases. Besides all those changes, there are some other noteworthy changes, but I will definitely not be going through them and there are a lot of them. I will also not be talking about the new integrations, although we did mention the LNA, Digital Media Server, and the Radio Browser. Some new integrations are available, but there are a lot of breaking changes. One other video I made previously about two years ago was Twitch integration. And finally, this version of Home Assistant, so Home Assistant 2022.3, is bringing the Twitch integration to the new API, but it has a breaking change. If you install the latest update, if you have Twitch integration working, it will stop. The old Twitch API this integration previously relied on is shutting down soon. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that 28th of February was the last date of the old Twitch API. And you are now required to use not just client ID, but also client secret. 
if there will be need, I will be recording separate video and it's not that hard to add this integration either if you had it previously or if this is the first time you are integrating Twitch in your system. As always, remember, this video was recording on the beta version, meaning that some or all or none of the changes may or may not be implemented into the release. But by the looks, I think that the release version will be very similar to the beta 4 version that I'm currently recording this video on. So, what is your favorite change or addition to Home Assistant? For me, things around Media Browser definitely are something that I'm really looking forward to implement in my system in more depth. Do you have any suggestion for Home Assistant devs on what they should include in future versions? Don't forget, if you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always find me on the Discord server. But also feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section below. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and also hit the bell button so you get notified on the new video releases and of course streams. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.